Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One. Today I want to talk a little bit about everything. Um, no really clear uh, path I want to go down, but just just talk to you, uh, tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, I've enjoyed the last 15 months on YouTube. I've uh, I've grown as a person. I've grown um, as a prepper from YouTube. I've met a lot of nice folks. Um, I've met people through long distance relationships, through phone, through email, PMs. And I've also met uh, people that uh, I've taken it to the next level and personally gone and met, met them. Uh, some live locally, some a uh, hundred miles away or so. And it's been very rewarding. Just want to stress to you that YouTube is an awesome place to learn and to grow as a prepper, but make sure you don't spend all your time watching videos uh, and, and think you're prepping. You are, you were learning, but you also gotta take that next step and start uh, implementing what you're learning and uh, make sure you physically prep yourself. If the grid goes down in a survival situation or any type of situation, that was YouTube people that you know and you, you, you talk to on YouTube are not gonna be there for you because it'd be physically impossible. Uh, they're states and states away. So make sure you develop your local network. Don't don't uh, spend all your time on the YouTube network. Make sure you do the local network. <clears throat> I get a lot of questions and a lot of people uh, talking to me saying, hey, I have no one. I, I know some places of the country I've found that to be harder to, to network. My area of the country is so simple. I spent the, today from about 10 to 5 with three different families. Um, trying to develop that network. They're all serious, hardcore preppers, and they're doing great, but we're, we're taking it to another level in this area. We're developing a great combo plan, so communication plan, so we can communicate across a couple of different counties. Uh, this will help us for sure. If someone needs help, uh, we'll be able to find out their need and maybe, maybe take care of it. So spend more time in your local area if you can, doing that prepping and that local networking. Yes. Don't, don't forget about YouTube, it's important, but when the grid goes down, it's not going to be the YouTube community that actually comes and helps you. It's going to be your local community, your neighbors and people you've developed. So make sure you, make sure you do as much as you can. I know it's hard to find preppers in your area. Uh, just, just keep plugging away and try to find them. Uh, we're building a network here. We have multiple, multiple groups and then a lot of individual families in the two counties of Pickens and Greenville and Oconee, the upstate of South Carolina. Uh, so that is where uh, in the last month my efforts been, that along with work and family and everything else. But I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing around the ideas in my head of really finalizing our network plan for this area. Uh, it's, we're gonna have a meet and greet very soon for the people I know and the groups I know in this area, just so we can start networking, um, seeing people's faces, knowing where they live, uh, developing contingency plans for everyone. Your place might not be safe, so if you have that contingency or that agreement where you can pick up and bug out, and maybe not bug out with just your bug out bag, but get on the radio and say, hey, I have to leave, can, can I have some assistance? And have two or three or four other uh, groups uh, send a send a guy or two in a truck and uh, help you move. You don't want to just leave and just grab your bug out bag and walk out the door and leave a year's supply of food, leave weapons, uh, goats, chickens, all kinds of livestock. That's where that networking comes. If one of the families have to leave, you have to have contingency plans for them. Uh, that stuff will be very valuable because it could be me that has to leave and I want to know, hey, I can get on that radio and in 10, 15 minutes I can have a couple pickups here some, some trucks, some trailers, a lot of helping hands to move everything. I've worked so hard my whole life. Um, and stuff that I'm going to need to sustain my family in, a, in life in general or in a survival situation. So work on that. That's what we're working on here. Um, it's coming together nicely. And we're just progressing to the next level. It's, it's going to take a, a lot of people um, to, to, to help others. So that's what I'm working on there. The, the networking is we're, in, we're full speed ahead. And these are people that I've known for a long time or other people I've known their whole life. So this group is a very uh, 
trusted group. Uh, it'd be difficult just to bring in new people you've never met um, into this group, but there's a place for that. There's a place to have your uh, internal group of people you've known, or and then there's that uh, network that you need to do of people you don't really know, but you know they're preppers. But there's definitely two distinct levels, and, and don't try to get them confused. Don't bring these people into your inner circle, your, your, your core group right away. Don't do it. Um, you don't know them. I have found that pretty much all the preppers I've found are great people. Um, I can honestly say none of them really scare me. Uh, I found them to be honest and trustworthy and hardworking. So develop that inner, go inner group and then get that outer group going where you can communicate. Um, we can pass messages countywide now and we're just it's just expanding so work on that <clears throat> also want to talk about uh, bugging in bugging out you need to have a place you're gonna bug out to so if you say I can't stay here I'm just gonna bug out you need to know that location uh, it needs to be a set place because you're not gonna sustain yourself for more than a few days or a week with your bug out bag some, some nights it's been 20 degrees, 25, 30 degrees outside. It, that is not the environment to take someone that's not accustomed to it. If you take your wife that lives in a nice house and has heating, air conditioning, uh, hot water, all the amenities of life, and you throw her outside in the woods, it's not going to be good for you. It's going to be stressful already. Um, so you got to have a plan. Figure out your plan. Um, network so you have a place to go a few other things um, March the 3rd there'll be a conference in Columbia South Carolina I will be speaking at that conference I will be speaking directly about security if you live in an urban setting I haven't talked about that a lot I live in the country so I I sort of forget about the people in the urban setting. They can do a lot of the same things I can do, but they have to do some things different because they got houses 20, 30 feet away. There's a, somebody else's house. They're in a subdivision with 100 different houses, and there's subdivisions all around them. I'm going to be tackling that question. How can I protect myself? How can I defend my property? How can I uh, protect my neighborhood? How can I network with people that aren't preppers now but will definitely have a vital interest in protecting their property? People are going to want the answers from you. And as a prepper, they might not listen to you right now, uh, but when the wolves are at the door, they're going to look to you and say, hey, what do we do? And you need to have your plan written out. You need to walk your neighborhood. You need to find out everything about your neighbors, every access point into your neighborhood. Um, you need to know the, the land. You need to know if there's draws and spurs and gullies and culverts where the people can infiltrate your community, infiltrate your subdivision. You need to know these things. You need to check out the high points, the vantage points. There's a whole mess of things you could do up right now. Um, and I'm going I'm to be addressing this. There's things you can do right now and, and get them written down. Think through, how would I defend my property? How would I defend my small community of 30 homes in a subdivision? walk it right now go for walks it's good for you you'll you'll be walking hopefully if you walk a lot you'll notice neighbors they'll see you walking you can get a conversation going even if it's just I know their faces now they know me I wave to them they wave back to me you need to you need to have a security plan now you don't need to have a security plan at the last second because it'll be very hard to come up with one and then you have to pitch it to your neighbors your neighbors might not be so eager to jump on board they might uh, look at you a little weird that's why your plan has to be rock solid now get your plan talk your plan through with other preppers have them come over to your community and say hey this is the plan that I'm gonna to use to defend my neighborhood yeah you might not right now only have a couple guys to help you but in a time of crisis there's gonna be neighbors that want their houses protected they're gonna come help you uh, figure out who you got in your community especially medical people um, law enforcement firefighters these people will be critical to securing your property um, so I'm gonna be talking a lot about that I'll be talking I think for 50 minutes just on the security of your subdivision um, so if you come and you're one of the uh, YouTube subscribers my please tell me that 
so I can meet you. Uh, it's hard to put names and faces and keep everything straight, but I will try. Um, so that's coming up on March the 3rd. It should be a good conference. Uh, Scott will be talking about water for urban people. Um, so it's going to be mostly, everything is going to be directed to people that live in the suburban areas uh, and the city areas. What you can do to secure your property, find water, have a water plan. So it should be a good conference directed to suburbanites. What else has been happening in my life? I'm prepping. Um, just continue to prep. Right now, my, my food supply is, uh, is great. I mean, it can always be better like anything. But right now I'm concentrating on other things. I'm concentrating on hygiene, uh, toilet paper, chemicals as in cleaning chemicals, all the other stuff, dog food, all kinds of food for the animals, I'm trying to round out everything. One thing I'm deficient is gas. I, I can never get ahead. I mean, I, I have 40, 50, 60 gallons of gas right now here. Um, but with the cost of gas, you, you know, if you order 200 gallons of gas to fill one of my tanks up, that's $700. A lot of, lot of, lot of money just to throw down. Um, and I'm just like everyone else. I'm on a budget. Uh, the one good thing I've been prepping for a long time. Uh, I've been a prepper since I was born, probably. Um, I've always been interested in prepping outdoor skills, probably because I like to be independent. I don't like to be tied to the system where everyone is providing me with something. I go to work, I get my paycheck, I convert it into Federal Reserve notes, I take those Federal Reserve notes, and then I buy everything I need to sustain myself. I would rather be able to provide everything myself. Um, as our society gets more complicated, um, people become more dependent on the system. And then when the system crashes, they have no skills. People have no skills. I, I have limited skills and I've been doing it for many years. Uh, they don't have the skills to sustain themselves. So when it crashes, it's going to be a very, very difficult crash for this country. People can't do anything. Uh, you might be, and I'm not picking on the computer guys out there, you might be a computer expert. You can fix a computer. If the system crashes, your skills aren't really necessary. In some cases, they will to try to get key infrastructure back up, but what skills do you have? And you could be a beautician. Now, I'm not making fun of any jobs out there. We need all those jobs, but develop a skills to sustain yourself. Um, not to have to rely on everyone to give us something. And in our society of just-in-time delivery, um, it's getting harder and harder. We need to get back to those basic skills. And those skills aren't anything they're living. They're just living skills that a hundred years ago people had to sustain themselves. So I've been prepping a while and I'm, I'm proud to be a prepper. Prepper is not a four-letter word. Some people are like, oh, you're a prepper. You're crazy. I'm not. I, I enjoy being a prepper. I'm proud of being a prepper. I, I, I'm proud of having the ability to take care of myself and my family without outside intervention or outside help. Yes, I need help in, in all kinds of areas or I buy things to make my life easier. Um, I just like that opportunity to say, hey, I can sustain myself. What else is going on here? I got so many projects going on. Uh, I got projects half done, uh, but I, I'm, I'm working hard. Hopefully in the next 30 days, I will have my, uh, my solar, simple pump solarized. So I will be totally off grid. That will be an excellent feeling of knowing power goes off, I can provide the water for my family. So that's another another project I'm working on. Always fencing, making it more secure. Uh, spring will be here before you know it, so start thinking about your garden. If you're in the city, uh, start planting a garden out. If it's only two tomatoes, two peppers, and a, a, you know a couple other little things, start learning. That is the big thing. Just don't buy your seeds and put them back. That, that's not going to help you. You need to start learning now and, and figure out what works for you. So I encourage you to uh, to start start thinking about your garden coming up in the spring. As I said, this video is, I don't know, the, the purpose of it. Just to share a little bit about uh, what I'm doing here and what I see. What, see what's coming. It, it doesn't look pretty. Uh, I'm not a doom and gloomer, but I can definitely see we are spending too much money. And economically, it's not viable. And as I said, if it crashes, it's going to be a terrible crash. So prepare yourself. You know, it might not be a raw situation of, uh, hey, the, uh, 
the zombie hordes are running around trying to steal your last can of beanie weenies. It could be Argentina style collapse of high inflation, uh, lower living standard, and just going without. So prepare yourself for that. Pre prepare yourself mentally to be able to handle that. Uh, prepare yourself uh, financially where you can develop a side job where you can just start being a producer of something on your property. Grow something, make something, do something. I appreciate the support I get. My channel has been growing. I'm very humbled that I get the support. I, when, when I wake up in the morning, I'm saying, why do these people listen to me? It's very humbling to, to know you're out there and you support me, and I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching.